Hey guys, Eddie Speed here. So when can seller financing be applied? Just to residential? No, seller financing can be applied to a commercial property as well. I've done seller financing on all kinds of crazy terms on land, commercial, uh, warehouse properties, even multifamily, all kind of different things as, as a way to essentially soften up the price by very favorable terms. I hope you'll really like this case study. This case study shows where you can adjust the terms and drastically adjust the profitability, drastically. So this is a, this is a case study about applying seller financing uh, on a, uh, a commercial property, uh, and it could be on any kind of collateral. It could be on a house, it could be on a commercial, but this one happens to be on a commercial property. I hope this is helpful to you. See you later. All right, Joe, tell us a story. Well, we've got a couple of young guys from uh, the Chicago area and they love self-storage. So this came to us, gosh, about, what was about three weeks ago, maybe four weeks ago. Yeah. And um, these guys were they, were, they were working through this transaction with the seller. And again, just kind of like Kevin Moan, right, Eddie? I mean, they were a little bit off. And so, uh, well, yeah, these guys are in CG with me, right. and uh, they they had just come to a class that Joe and I did out in uh, San Francisco. The last live class we did, by the way. Yes, that's right. They had just done done a class with us in um, San Francisco, and uh, sharp guys, and and there's kind of a group of these guys, so they're not all young guys. So they've got a couple of them there older than me. Yep, yep, that's true. There's a couple of our age, right? Oh, yeah, oh, my age, kind of old, right? Right. So um, anyway, so we we reach out. Uh, he reaches out to us and he said, "Look, here's my deal. Let me get this thing to working right here. This is a this is a storage facility, and, and uh, we've got some little details on it, just a picture or two. So here's kind of the high level of details. It costs five million. The guy's not going to back off the price. Right. What right? yeah. a place called Derby, Kansas." I don't know where that is, but somewhere. And another one's in Anover, Kansas. So, uh, so you see the unit count and that kind of thing. So what we're trying to really say here to you guys is this, yes, this will work on resi. It'll work on land. It will work on commercial. It will work on any property you can imagine, right? So particularly, I think, Joe, that coming out of the back side of this thing i think commercial real estate is going to have some let's just say some hair on it it's going to have some hair on it and there is certainly going to be some opportunities that if you structure it right where you can really uh make some money all right so remember now these guys had just been to a class with us and they're smart they're they're, they're savvy guys and uh, they had just been to a class with us he said okay well I need you to take some, some some terms for me. If we're paying five million and we're going to get a traditional mortgage for four point five million, and right. we need five hundred thousand, you know, reduction off the price because the numbers aren't quite what we thought. And the guy said, "Can't do that." He said, "Well, if, would you carry terms?" So I thought this was interesting because when he first sent those terms to me, Joe, I thought they were a joke because uh -huh. because the, this let me just tell you this number one here is the best terms he was here willing to carry second at three percent amortized over 20 years with an eight-year balloon then he said oh i'll do uh 500 000 at four percent amortized over 20. so he's going to raise it 100 basis points and only extend the amortization five more years with the same balloon right <laughs> so, and it gets trust better me, trust me you you shouldn't need a calculator to know that ain't as good, that ain't as good as the first one. And then he even got worse, and he did the same thing on the other one. Let me right. raise the price another two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I don't know why. He did, I don't know why the seller did this, except he thought maybe my guys were dumb and they're not. <laughs> anyway, he, that that wasn't the thing. <laughs> All right, so we went with this number one here, and basically. Uh, I just said it's not a deal. 
right? So uh, let's just say this was conventional mortgage money or or capital in some way, shape, or form that he's raising. Yeah. And I don't truly, I don't have the terms on the on the first. So we, Joe and I are just somewhat guessing that this is kind of what it is. But this was a seller second, and this is what he proposed. Okay. And um, and by the way, let me just tell you something. We'll make these slides available to you guys, and I am taping this because I'm. We're gonna we're kind of taking up the level of complexity, and we're gonna get to some. You know, we're gonna start twisting some numbers around here in a little bit. So I I I don't want you to get overly perplexed. We'll I'll make these slides available to you guys, and also I'll have an audio of it that you can do it. So an eight-year balloon makes the balloon three thirty-four nine eighty-eight. Okay, that's the way the amortization schedule would look. So there's your five hundred thousand written at three percent, twenty-year AM, eight-year balloon. Okay, so there's your eight-year balloon there at the end of eight years, and I said um, this isn't a good deal. And he goes, "Why do you say that?" I said. It's just not that advantageous for you. Okay. And he says, well, explain to me why you say that. So, Joe, the payment on this deal, I want to make sure everybody knows this, the payment is $27.73. Right. Okay. And, and that's the way the amortization looks. That's the principal only as it amortizes down for eight years. Okay. This is another Excel graph. This is the present value of payments. So if when you move your finger here down the line, you can see at the end of eight years, Joe, that $2,700 payment at 9% yield is still worth about 1,350 bucks. And every payment north of that is worth more because it's due quicker. That's so this correct. is so in the note buying business, we buy future payments at a discount. Right. Right. So so this is a true mathematical analysis of how to look at a note. And if you're the borrower, I want to make the most inexpensive note I can make, not the most expensive note I can make. Correct. Right. So I'm just saying mathematically, this is why I knew this wasn't a good deal. And for a lot of you, you, your mind has never gone there because you've never looked at get like this whole process of dictating the terms to the guy you owe money to. That's right. So the seller is motivated, but he's not that motivated. He's not willing to give up the farm. Okay. So. Here's the thing, Joe. If I do an eight year up note, the odds of me buying my own note at a discount is probably around 30 or 40 percent. Correct. Okay. So I'm going to write all this stuff in the note, like first right of refusal, and they can't go even sell the note to somebody else until that guy has written an unconditional obligation to buy the note and have proof of funds and then i got 120 days to match his offer right. okay so so i want if, if that guy ever wakes up and decides to sell his note at a discount i want to be the daddy right Correct. but the odds are the guy's getting a note and it's getting paid back over eight years and he just statistically from being around the note business a long time he's just not necessarily going to sell a note at a giant discount Correct. so i ran a present value calculation joe as if yes you did we were creating a note and we were going to buy that note at the closing table Correct. and that is what the note is worth so if i bought that note today at a nine percent yield which, by the way, you would never buy a piggyback second behind four hundred and fifteen thousand, four four and a half million dollars in in superior debt. You would never buy at a single digit yield. So trust me, I used the most ridiculous low yield number that I could pick. Right. Okay. So this is 
this is a 9% yield. If you picked a higher yield, the comparison in a moment would be even more dramatic. Okay. So Eddie, this is, so what, what he did with this is, is this is a, it, it hit with his terms. It's 500,000 amortized over 20 years, but at the end of, and everybody knows what a balloon is, but just to make sure, but at the end of eight years, um, they've got to pay off that balance, which was $352,000. Let me make sure we got it. Yeah. That's what, that's what he, that, the payment here, if you can see my cursor, the payment here is 2,750 bucks a month for, for 96 months. And the end of 96 months, there's still a balloon of 334,000. Okay. So I just ran a, a present value of those payments. Here's the payment, here's the balloon. I said, if I bought that at not a 3% yield, but I bought it at a 9% yield, which is below market for that kind of a note, then, then I would pay for that note 352,000 bucks, right? Now, he came to us and he says, here's the guy's proposal, one, two, or three. And Joe and I kind of laughed and said, how about none of the above? <laughs> and seriously, and uh, he goes, okay, well, what would you do? And I said, well, what about the collateral? Is he willing to release part of the collateral? So the guy did the second and took this piece off. Right. So it's not part of the collateral. Right. Okay. So then we said, reject all the above and tell him that the term with the eight year balloon is really a problem. I said, because how are you gonna raise the money and pay this thing off in eight years? You're gonna have to do it. You're either gonna have to do a capital call with your investors, or you're gonna be forced to go refi and try to hope there's enough juice in this thing to refi and get enough money to pay off this, this, more, this balloon. I said, so I see the balloon as being a bomb. Right, balloons are bomb. Balloons are bombs, right. except when you're collecting them. Right. So, so he said, okay. And, and, and I said, but I, I don't know how to get the guy to, to agree to, to carry a longer term. I said, what if you agreed on the backside of this deal to pay him twice the interest he's asking for? What? He said, yeah. He said, what? I said, twice the interest he's asking for. So here is what we proposed. You do 2%, these are on 20 year AMs and we shorten the AM out every time, okay? The uh, 20, uh, 20 year AM, 2%, um, seven years, then, then you owe 347 at the end of seven years. Take that amount of money and you kick the rate up to four, right? Then the payment goes to 2858. Right. Then you do that for six years. At the end of six years, you owe 209. Then 209, you kick the rate up to twice the rate he asked for. Right. 3,054 bucks a month for the remaining seven years and amortizes down to zero. Okay. Now, without some understanding of present value of future dollars, and without the understanding that the longer the term, the more likely they are to sell a loan at a discount, most people might miss this. Correct. But I've spent my life learning this, and that's what I wanna make sure that you guys get, because my 20 minute conclusion took me about 30 years to learn. Yeah. So there's our graft, and there's our payments, as they go. So see, the higher payment, Joe, now you're starting into where you're starting to discount the payment, right? Because right? now you're sawing into the, that 2,858 bucks, you know, it's it's worth less money because it starts being only due eight years or seven years from now. Right. Then you have this other window when it kicks into the 6% interest and that higher payment, that's way out there. Now that payment, 
now you're looking at a loan that it you're it, you're now in the 25 cent on the dollar range so of course i can pay my higher payment if i push it out further as to when i owe it and and remember that the that the payment at three percent for 20 years was 2773 so the first seven years the first 84 months you're less you're a little more for the second six for the six years and then you're a little bit more for for the other right but you're paying it off at well 700 a month, that that three thousand dollar payment's worth 700 bucks which is like eddie said it's about 22 23 percent so here's a pattern that we've noticed the guys that we help and do this business bring deals to us and the pattern is pretty overwhelming that my seller eddie and joe my seller will do this but they want it all to be paid off in eight years to ten years and that number joe happens about 93 percent of the time right yes so when we first started seeing this we said look a zero interest rate eight year note is not a great deal. I know this because I have an Excel formula that shows me what it's worth. It's just not that good of a haircut. I would rather pay 3% interest for 25 years than 0% for eight years. Mathematically, that's to my advantage. Yes. But more importantly, the odds of me buying my own note at a discount go up exponentially. Yes. Okay. So this is the same calculation on these terms. So while it appears that we are paying a lot more interest, or our student is, the note is worth 50,000 less. I mean, it's just math. It's just math. So there's the there's our deal, and this is the deal the guy proposed. Right. Excuse me, Joe. Forty. I don't want to overstate anything here. It's right. only forty six thousand. Oh, Five, okay. It's yeah. a nine percent yield, and if you know how yield and discounting works, the higher the yield, the greater the discount. The longer the term, the greater the discount. So Correct. using right. a nine percent yield was a very modest analysis to do this with. It very really modest. And again, just understand that the reason that you can pay three fifty two is because you know it's going to be paid back. It's worth that is because you know that it's going to be paid back in eight years. On the on the second the the second piece there, it's less simply because you're going the two hundred and forty months. Yeah. Which brings us to the really cool thing. All right, so you understand that that we can be a math nerd and run financial modeling and cash flows and present values and do all that kind of stuff all day, and then there's reality. The reality is is the odds of buying your own note at a discount. Remember, this is about forty percent, and I say this is about ninety nine percent. I didn't want to say a hundred because I can't always guarantee that'll happen, yeah. but I can say that you'll scare the hell out of a hundred. Right. So, um, definitely, definitely, definitely understand that we have learned that the step rate is something that lenders that the, the the seller financer the guy that's willing to carry the paper for you they this is the most amazing little trick we've ever figured out right right they say three we say one to four or two to four or whatever well remember when you're paying the early part of that loan you're amortizing the loan that even though your payment is lower you're it's chopping off the principal that you will owe and so even when you get to the higher interest you're paying you're paying a higher rate but on a good bit less principal right 
and we know, like we like we're demonstrating here, is that there's about a 99% chance that it'll never make it to even from the two to the four percent, right? Because yeah. it's going to pay. They're going to they're going to want to sell it and and be done with it. Yeah. So this is the deal that we just have helped put together. Okay. Um, let's talk about the terms other than the the math, right? First right of refusal to buy the note. I'm telling you, if you don't put that in your own, your notes, your well, I bought forty thousand seller finance notes. You know, the only reason that I could say that with being a being a statement, Joe, is the guy that was borrowing the money did not put a first right of refusal in there to buy the note the way I would do it. Because otherwise, I'd never have a chance to buy that note. Cool. And and again, you don't know what you don't know. Got a great question from Brandon, uh, by the way, and I want to throw it in there so we can kind of talk it through just a second. Okay. Brandon uh, says, he says, is your talk off? Um, here's what I can do or the deal won't work for me or how do you word it more eloquently? And by the way, he sent us a picture of his uh, of Brooks, his baby there, his, his baby boy um, at the computer with him uh, getting an early start. <laughs> He's beautiful, by the way, Brandon. So, so Brandon, um, and I happen to know that Brandon is, you know, like personally coached with Chris Voss, and right. he's excellent at the talk off, right? So, Brandon, I don't know. I know Chris Voss has all these terms for these things that he teaches, yes. right? So, I don't know that I'm gonna. I'm not gonna name the term correctly. But here's how I did it. I can't make that. This is how I told Fernando, the guy that we just did the, this scenario to, or, he, or or Kevin Moen or whoever it is, right? I can't make what I can't make the math work the way that you're needing it to work. But if you'll get it the way I need it to work, I'm willing to pay you on the on on the backside of this loan. You know, a lot more interest than what you're even asking for. And so my takeaway with them is I need this to work and I want it to work for you. And the reason I'm, I'm going to show you that I want it to work for you is I'm willing to pay you more interest. And I just will tell you, there's such a pattern to it. You just can't believe it. Right. Yep. To this degree, Brandon, when students will go and do the step rate, we almost never have them call back and say, no, nah, the guy wouldn't talk. I mean, I'm not saying never, but we almost never, right? I'm not saying nothing's 100%, but it's pretty crazy odds that, um, because once, and then, okay, what are they going to do with all this money when they get it? Right. Right? That's it. Well, how would they deploy the money and, what happens tax wise? True. You see, the way they're doing this, they can take installment sale on it. Right. So That's they're not right. triggering a bunch of income every year, which isn't triggering a big tax liability every year. It's just like the Kevin Moan deal, or, you know, that that's one of the biggest things for that right i mean when you look at it they've paid that property off many many years ago they've owned it since the 80s they've if they did it the way that should have been done they would have depreciated the value of that property down to zero so there's that old irs term called recapturing the depreciation yeah all right um so he did put a subordination clause in there. Right. And um, uh, he did a step rate with monthly payments. He extended the term from eight years to 20 years. I mean, there's really nothing else to say. I mean, I told him instinctively when we did it, I thought that was worth 50 to 60,000 bucks. I did not know at the time we carved it up on the whiteboard. I hadn't really gone back. I was just kind of operating on some instincts and things that I've done in the past. But it turned out it was right in the money. 
And by yeah. the way, if you buy your own note at a discount, it's erase what you thought the additional profit was. You're going to make more, <laughs> right? You got him to release collateral. So one of the two properties he didn't put up, put under the mortgage. He took out personal liability. I mean, and you know, we did what we forgot to put in there. I think it was a substitution of collateral as well. Mm. He did. So he put a substitution of collateral clause in there. I'm sorry we did that. We just built the slide this morning, Joe and I, and I'm sorry. <laughs> I guess I, Joe, I guess it's just the stress of the coronavirus, I guess. So what he did was, is he wrote a clause in there that said that he would release this property, the, the, what he had under mortgage, he would release it as as the collateral and allow an exchange of collateral of like kind or better. And the reason obviously you want to do that is first of all, if you have below market financing, you want to keep the financing in place, but also what does it do to the chances you're going to buy your own note at a discount? So um, that's really, really a big deal. So this is obviously just a small glimpse of what's possible. Different paths to choose from. <laughs> now, these paths can be limitless in the options that they can give you if they're part of how you structure deals or how you know that you can structure deals. Imagine if you had this tool in your toolbox. Well, if you had this tool in your toolbox and you regularly knew how to use it and you could lay it in whenever it would fit, what would that do for you? This is what we love being able to teach people how to do is to show them this creative finance process, something that clearly we've been developing for a long time and open up your mind as to what's possible. And then of course, something very important, which is how would this apply to you? However we can help you next, we would love to know how to do that. Uh, and just reach out to us, but just let us know what we could do to help you start applying these strategies to your business. See you later. Bye-bye.